All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to clean up your chart of accounts. So I'm going to start up here with my list and my chart of accounts. So why do we want to do this? Okay, so this is one of the things that we do the most often with our customers. Um, and we'll get a couple people that give us a little bit of pushback, right? Because they say, oh, well, my accountant uses or my, you know, my tax person uses uh, our chart of accounts, the way that it's set up, and that's how it links to the tax return. And we still say to them, that's fine, but QuickBooks is not just about recording information for your taxes, right? QuickBooks is also about recording information so you can make good business decisions. And if we have kind of a mess in our chart of accounts, you know, this is the, um, the home base of our two most important reports in, in accounting, right? Our balance sheet and our P&L. And if this is kind of messy or hard to read, what we've found is we've found, first of all, owners won't even look at it or managers or decision makers, they won't even look at it if it's complicated or too difficult to understand. If they have to do some math in their head, right? How much do I have? I don't care about how much I have in each bank account. I just want to know how much cash I have on hand. Those kind of things. So organizing the chart of accounts this way really helps to uh, make sure that you know, people can look at it, see it, see information quickly. The other thing, the other big reason that we organize the chart of accounts this way is because when you're sharing data with people like potential investors or banks, etc., the banks are the same way. They don't care about if you spent, you know, $30 last month on registrations and licenses. They want to know high level buckets, how much money is going out, where, you know, where money is being spent. So similar to when you look online, if you look at you know public companies, when they post their financials online, um, they have, you know, their chart of accounts is not that you know 2015 <laughs> uh, accounts in length. They have high level buckets, and then underneath those buckets, they'll have sub accounts. So that's what we're going to talk about and how to set this up today. So everybody would do this a little different, right? Every company may have a little different. Um, set up, but I'm going to talk about the ones that are pretty standard today um, and why, you know, when to create new buckets, etc. So starting with the balance sheet up top here, right? So I've got all my bank accounts up here. If your accounts are not in order, right, balance sheet order here, make sure to go down to account and resort your list. So starting with cash, I'm just going to create a new bank account called cash and cash equivalents. Okay, once I have that account set up, then I can just drag these underneath, right, like that. Okay, uh, next accounts receivable. If you have multiple accounts receivable accounts, um, sometimes we'll s set them up as headers and subs. Most of the time, though, the majority of our customers have one AR account. If you have more than two AR accounts, we should probably talk about why <laughs> they're, they're there's probably a better way because <laughs> um, it makes it very difficult for receiving payments and transferring funds and stuff like that. So um, anyway, we should talk about that if you, if you have multiple AR accounts. Okay, going down into the other current assets area. So we do already have an account set up for prepaids here. Now, if you post anything, you never want to post anything to the header account, right? So if you post anything, let's do a quick report on this. So there's nothing posted to this account. So I can make this my header account. Now what I like to do actually to make sure that people are aware, if you're using account numbers, for the header accounts, I'll actually take the account numbers out, right? Because it's kind of an extra reminder that uh, don't use this. So I'll come down here, prepaid. And if you, I mean, it's going to sort in order, right? So it's going to go by the account number or it's going to go alphabetical. Um, if you do, when, when we get down to the uh, P&L area, especially in the expenses area, if you do need them in a particular order, then I use high level numbers, right? Not 13, 10, I'll use just one, right? 1 1.2, 1.3 type of things. Again, it just kind of helps to, uh, helps to keep it organized. Okay, so uh, security deposits, or I'm sorry, um, employee advances. Um, so these are uh, not really prepaids. 
these are kind of like other current receivables so I'm going to go ahead and create one called current receivables so it's going to come down here to an other current asset or current other receive okay all right, so here an employee advances will go under there. Security deposits uh, is not generally a current asset, right? So I'm actually going to fix that. Let's stick it down to other assets. The reason is, and watch our other videos on this, current assets should be used or should be relieved within a year. Other assets will be held on for longer. So most likely security deposits are having to do with rent or something. And uh, usually leases are for longer than a year, right? So the security deposit will be sitting there for longer. Okay, inventory asset. Right now I just have one inventory asset account. If I had multiple, so let's say you break up your inventory into you know inventory whip or materials versus finished goods, etc., then I would like to to have a header account for inventory, right? So I would come in here, make another current asset, call it inventory. Oops. and then move inventory, all those inventory assets under there, okay? Undeposited funds, we just leave by itself. That's something a little different, right? An account that we don't wanna really mess with. Uh, fixed assets, some same thing. I'm gonna come in, create a high level called fixed assets. Okay, you may want to break up your fixed assets for some reason, you know, automobile and equipment versus um, I don't know, versus office supplies or not office supplies, <laughs> office equipment. So maybe you have your, you know, if you're a company that loans out a heavy equipment, um, so those fixed assets go into one fixed asset category and then office fixed assets fall into a different one. So that might be a way to kind of break it up a little bit. But you definitely um, do want to put it into a header account. So I try to put every single account under some kind of header account for the most part. Okay, security deposits, there's only one in here. So I'm just gonna leave it as is, but if there are other other assets, I would probably put them as subs and break them up. Accounts payable, similar to accounts receivable. So I'm just going to leave that as is. Again, if you have more than two AP accounts, let's, let's check out and see what's going on there. Credit cards, same thing. I would set them up as a credit card. Maybe we set up, if we have like four or five Amex cards, we set it up with Amex, and then all the Amex cards go as subs, and then maybe we have only one or two MasterCard and Visa, you can say credit card other, so you can see how much you owe Amex versus other. Um, in this case, we just have one, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Okay, payroll taxes payable. Um, so probably with the payroll taxes payable, so I have this payroll liabilities down here. Let's see, whoops, quick report, not edit. Uh, so I'm not using this, this account, so I'm gonna use this as my header and then stick under there all the payables for payroll. Okay, all right. Uh, then we have sales tax payable, which we're gonna leave alone again. Sales tax payable generally doesn't have any sub accounts. Uh, receive not invoiced, we're gonna leave alone. That has to do with inventory, customer deposits, and line of credit. Um, so usually those would fall into some other buckets, but again, they're so different right here they, that I probably couldn't stick them into other buckets, right? Because customer deposits and you know those are when people pay you and you haven't performed the work yet line of credit maybe if you had multiple lines of credits we would say current portion of you know notes payable or other notes payable but we have just one so I'm gonna leave it there okay same thing long-term liability we have just one we're gonna leave it there moving down to the equity section so this is an area also um, where we have a lot of kind of differences it's all about what people like to see the way that I like to set this up is I like to create an account called owner's equity and then under owner's equity I put owner's draws owner's contributions and then owner's accumulated equity okay now if you have multiple owners you'd have you know multiple sets of these so you'd have owner one equity owner one draws etc owner two equity owner two contributions draws 
And then what happens is the contributions and draws run throughout the year. And then once a year, we zero those out and move them into accumulated equity. So it basically shows you know, the retained earnings. We also zero out retained earnings and separate it into the different owner's equity based on their percentage of ownership. Okay. Opening balance equity should be left alone outside of an account. It should never have a balance. Don't look. <laughs> uh, so we always want to get that opening balance equity down to zero. Okay, so revenues. Uh, so this one's pretty basic with the revenues. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and create a high level income called sales. Again, not a great example of this. I'm sure some of you all have some revenue breakouts that are important. Uh, one way, for example, with our company, which is a reseller of software and hardware, but we're also a service-based company, so we would have service sales as one header account, and then under that we would have, you know, tax, bookkeeping, general consulting, etc. And then we have product sales, and under that we would have software, hardware, supplies, etc. Right? So that's a good example. So if you can think of ways that you could break that up. All right, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is another big one. Um, so we want to make sure our biggest costs usually are around materials and direct labor. Okay, um, so we want to make sure that we have this set up the right way. So uh, let's go ahead and let me see if there's anything under direct labor. Okay, so we didn't use direct labor, so I'm going to go ahead and edit direct labor make it my header by taking away that, put wages here. Usually wages for warehouse wouldn't fall under direct, but um, we'll leave that as is. Okay, and then we're gonna call uh, commissions also, we'll put under labor. Uh, and then we'll have another one called, so cost of goods sold, and uh, let's say, um, we'll just call it COGS for now. So general COGS, I'm not sure what this company does. So here, and then freight costs, packaging materials, purchases, all fall under there, okay? All right, so I have everything categorized up top here. Sometimes it's difficult, right? A lot of times we won't see people categorizing or you know putting them into different buckets uh, on the balance sheet. I do suggest trying to. Um, and then same with sales and cost of goods sold, trying to get them into some high level buckets. If you have more than four or five accounts, you probably want to try and stick them into some different buckets here. Getting down to the expense side, this is usually the side that has the most effect. Okay, because when I look at my expenses right now, right, if I were to run a profit and loss statement, I go, you know, well, let's just go ahead and do this. <laughs> profit and loss. So I go, okay, I have payroll taxes, I paid this much, and then employee benefits, I paid this much, but how much in total did I pay for payroll? Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, let's keep going down. I had legal fees of this and professional liability here, and then down here I have some accounting fees, and then down here I have, but how much in total did I pay for professional fees? I don't know, right? Because I would have to do that math and figure it out. So that's where, as a business owner, we tend to find that people don't read these financials unless we kind of give it to them, right? In a in a good, clean format. And I'm the same way. <laughs> I prefer to read my financials in a good, clean way. I want to look at it from a high level, and then if I need to see the details, I will look at the details. So how do we organize this? So I create a couple high-level categories. So we'll just start. Usually I, when, when I'm going through this with the customer, I just start at the top, right, and work my way down. So sick and holiday vacation pay, right? So I want to create a new expense called payroll expenses. Uh, and I'm going to put a period at the end because probably... Um, there's another payroll expenses in here. <laughs> okay, so stick that under there, sick and holiday vacation, payroll tax expense, employee bonus, uh, employee benefits. Occasionally, employee benefits will put into a different area called like employee benefit or called employee benefits or employee development, maybe for employee trainings, um, uniforms, things like that. So again, it depends 
uh, we'll, we'll look at in a minute on when they should get their own bucket. Okay, computer repairs. Um, again, you have to kind of look at this. Is that an IT company? So is this professional fees? Or is this, um, you know, taking it and getting, I don't know, some a new battery installed or something like that. So we have to look at what it is. For computer repairs, I'm gonna stick it in a high level category called professional fees. Okay. Oops, it's already in use. <laughs> All right, so I'll just put a period at the end and we'll, again, when you're going through this, it's I'd say go through it, do a first pass right and and get everything as closely categorized as you can and then we're going to look at the results and then make some changes from there okay so computer repairs legal fees all right we're going to create one called insurance already in use <laughs> okay insurance so drag it down here professional liability health insurance life Disability, okay, registration and license. We're gonna create a high level one called general and admin. Oops. All right. Registration and license. Okay, mileage, insurance auto. So insurance auto, I'm gonna stick under insurance. Now, depending on, again, you have to make decisions. We'll do that after the fact. If it turns out that we have a lot of car insurance, you know, car expenses, then we might wanna create a high level generic one called auto expenses, okay? So let me go ahead and create this for now. And then after the fact, when we review it, then we can decide if it's worth it for it to have its own little drop down or if we should be putting these into things like travel fees or something. So accounting fees, we're gonna stick under professional fees. Now notice what I'm doing here is I'm actually just grabbing uh, the little diamond right on the side and that allows me to drag and drop. Um, so one of the ones we will do a lot of times is we will do marketing and advertising. Right, so again, you wanna make a decision. Is this a bucket that's gonna be important for your company, right? Is it something that is enough money is spent in this area that it's worth your time looking at, okay? So bank service charges, general and admin, those are probably usually pretty low. Businesses license fees, pretty low. Car and truck can stick under auto, okay. Repairs and maintenance. This is one of those that are, you know, make a decision. You have to make a decision on if repairs and maintenance is a pretty high expense or you have some concern around it. You have equipment that needs to get repaired a lot. Probably needs its own little header category. For now, I'm just going to pretend like this is not one that has a lot of expense and I'm going to stick it under. I can't talk and type. <laughs> I'm going to stick it under rent and occupancy here. Okay, so repairs and maintenance. Conferences and seminars, again, this might be something that we put into a category called employee development, right? If you have a lot of employee development fees here at Four Lane, we send our, you know, our service consultants and our sales reps to different conferences to make sure that they have the most up-to-date knowledge about apps and, and um, QuickBooks, of course. Uh, we also uh, have certifications that they have to go through every year. So, you know, that's a big part of our expenses here is employee development and training, continue training. And so that definitely gets its own category on our chart of accounts, okay? But for this company, we're gonna just say that it's not, conferences and seminars is not a big expense, so I'm gonna stick it under GNA. The other thing too is conferences and seminars could be trade shows for you. So maybe it doesn't go under GNA. Maybe it goes under marketing and advertising, right? So you have to make, you have to know and kind of understand. When we're doing this for clients, what we do is we sit it, we sit down, we organize the chart of accounts the way that we expect it should be done or what we think should be done with it. Oops. Uh, and then we show it to the customer, right? In the buckets after the fact. Um, so that the customer can say yes, no, right? This means something different, etc. So we want to make sure that it's input from the 
the person who's going to be looking at this long term. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Maintenance and janitorial, under rent and occupancy. Marketing, we'll stick here, under marketing and advertising. Meals and entertainment, so this is one we haven't done yet. Uh, I suggest separating this out anyway. So meals, entertainment, and travel. Sometimes I'll just call it meals and travel um, because that is, you know, for tax purposes, a kind of important area for people to have separated. Uh, office equipment. So I'm just going to stick this under GNA. Obviously, if it's office equipment that is over the threshold for your fixed assets, you know, then that should fall in the fixed assets area. Postage and delivery, printing and reproduction. Again, printing and reproduction, it could be uh, for marketing and advertising. It could be GNA expenses, right? So you have to kind of decide what bucket that should fall under. Professional development, so that is one of the things, again, we um, have right here at Fourline, we have an, a professional development as an entire sep separate account. Um, a separate header, but for now I'm just going to stick it in GNA. Professional fees. Um, that one could be a little confusing too. So, is this for lawyers or something, or is this for, um, I don't know, like a BNI or you know something like that? So you have to really pay attention to that. Now, as I go down the list here, you see it's kind of harder for me to get to my headers. So this is where I start to go in and, and edit it instead. So I'm going to stick it under payroll expenses, promotional expense, we'll put marketing, rent. I'm almost done, almost done. <laughs> okay, um, so I like to think of rent and occupancy as cost to maintain, right? So um, my space. So equipment doesn't really fall under that. Um, but again, for just getting through this right now. Um, but I like to think of it, you know, telephone goes under rent and occupancy. Uh, utilities goes under rent and occupancy. Those kinds of things. Travel. Wages will go under payroll. Expenses. Okay. Again, under payroll expenses. All right. Early payments. So, so now I'm down to the bottom of the list here um, and I'm in other income. So same thing. I do like to categorize this um, right with high level. So other income will stick interest income and early payment discounts. Other expenses, interest expense, you know, these will go under there. And then non posting, I'll have to do anything with. Okay, so now that I have it <clears throat> like this in all my buckets, I'm going to go ahead and resort my list again. All right, notice it puts it in alphabetical order here. All right, so if you want it in some kind of different order, that's where you would go in and put, you know, number one, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 or 6, 6.1, 6 6.2 type of thing. All right, all that hard work. Let's see the results. So we're going to go into a P&L. We're going to just say for all for now. Okay, so sales, revenues, we only have one little bit here, so it's not so exciting. Cost of goods sold, we have cost of goods sold details and direct labor details, right? And then down below we have it here, all of our expenses. So we can hit this nifty little collapse button so that everything rolls up into its header account, right? So I have sales, well, first of all, I have my entire P&L on one page, which is awesome. If I were doing comparative, right? So let's say, show my columns by year, I have great detail, right, year over year detail in one quick area so that when I'm reviewing, looking at budgets, looking at how did we perform year over year, week over week, quarter over quarter, lots of good information in a small space, okay? So when we're going down and deciding if this is the right, you know, setup for us, right, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's material caught, right? Material high level buckets. If we had a bucket here that had $25 in it, it probably should be 
stuck under something else, right? So let's pretend auto expenses was only $300 for the entire year. Probably not worth our time paying attention to why our auto expenses went up or down, right? $300 out of $400,000 in sales, uh, we're not gonna make or break the bank with that. Okay, so you wanna make sure that it's material buckets first. Then you wanna make sure that it's not too large of buckets, right? So if you have 90% of your expenses falling into one bucket, you need to break it up. We need to see some other buckets in there, all right? Now with this, what's nice is if I, as an owner, right, I go, yeah, everything looks right or I'm looking at it comparatively, right? So quarter over quarter, consistent, 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 da, 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 da. Here, whoa, what happened to marketing and advertising in you know this quarter? And then I can expand to see the details. Okay, there was a marketing expense of $4,500. What was it? Oh yeah, we did that whole PR thing. Okay, let's go back in here and continue, right? So when you're looking at comparatives, it really helps you to it really helps you to drill down and understand, um, you know, even like this, looking at this, and you're looking at comparatives. It's it's a little bit harder for the eyes to see, a little bit harder for you to remember what was up here versus down here. Okay, and it just really helps. We found for people to make good business decisions. All right, now if you decided that it's the wrong setup, right, you wanna go back into your chart of accounts, you can say, you know, um, this printing and reproduction should have gone edit, it should go under general and admin, right, so you can move things around. But once you pick it, once you get your setup the right way, stick with it for a while, stick with it for six months and see, and make sure, right, don't make any changes don't make changes to it once a month. You want to have that consistency in here. Okay, now you can go and organize your chart of accounts.